Hello everyone and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is episode 14. Last time we did a lot of trials and tribulations on the planet of Manan, a lot of court hearings and a lot of politics on the planet uh, as we tried to prove our own innocence as well as Sunri's. Only one of those unfortunately worked out for us. Um, and this episode we're going to proceed to locate the star map uh, by doing a mission for the Republic. Um, I actually think it might be a good idea for us to actually have a chat to Jolie. I wonder if he has anything to say from last episode about us um, failing to prove Sunri's innocence. Got something on your mind, do you? There you go, yeah. So what do you think of Sunri's verdict? You defended him well enough. I wish we had time to look into matters more fully. But wishing is only useful for the young and idealistic. What's done is done. The Republic will likely appeal the matter eventually, and he'll be free. I just... Oh, I, I just would like to know if that's best. Sunri was a good man once, and a good friend. I'll miss him. Ah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. My jaw aches. <laughs> he got emotional, and he's like, Ah, I don't want to get emotional. I'm old and bitter. Okay, he does have something to say about it. Uh, we're going to push into the... We're going to push into the uh, Republic... Uh, embassy now. I think I've walked around with Bastler and Jolie for long enough as well um, at this point. So we're actually going to do a party member switch um, and I'm going to bring out HK and and Candrus. Um, so I'm going to hang out with them and I think that's a good idea. And we'll bring out Karth when we go to Karaban because Karth's son, as we learned, um, is on Korriban at the Sith Academy. Alright, let's put your repair skill up and your demolitions, HK. And then Candorous. Let's level up your ability to treat your injury and then let's have a look at your feats. Probably a good idea to do... I'm gonna do Master Dueling. We're just gonna get your Master Dueling up. There you go. Perfect. Sure. Sure. Um, in terms of... Everybody's inventory though. Is everybody equipped with good stuff? Do you want do you want some new things, guys? Got a gravity generator. That's a cool thing that we got. You can have that. Computer use and security plus four. Computer use plus six. There you go. Computer use plus six. Security plus four. Perfect. Or I can just give you even better computer usage. Um not bad. And then, have we gotten any decent weapons recently? I don't really think we've gotten a lot of stuff that we could make use of. I think we're good. You've got Barker's Ceremonial Blade, Carlo Nord's Battle Armor, Strength Gauntlets, and Energy Things. I think, yes. we're, I think we're good. Perfect. My squad. I wonder if these guys will talk to each other. I'm kind of hoping that they would. I would love to know if Candorous and HK could have some conversations. I mean, they hang out together in the same place on the Ebon Hawk, so potentially, you know, potentially they've got some some conversations, but they probably already have their conversations on the ship, hey? <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if they're actually saying anything, I'm just bringing them along with me in case they will, because they're like a, a pair that I haven't really had with me as much. My two dark side um affiliated characters as I keep pushing further towards the dark side myself with my with my excellent fashion choices <laughs> um, after we get our star map on this planet as well we're gonna make use of going to Dantooine and then we'll head back here to check in with um, with Hulus about our our cool bounty hunting that we've been doing. I'm very excited to, to further that quest line some more as well. That's going to be very, very cool. So let's push into the Republic base now. And we're just going to take this submarine down. Restricted access. We have access. Cool submersible. Ah, so that's what it looks like. Up above. Okay. I'm gonna go to the city of Otagunga. 
Let's use the submersible. The submersible can be used to descend to the deep ocean. Racket research station. Use the submersible. Let's go. We're going underwater, baby. Take us down. Ah, that's the same sound effect. That's so sick. As the, uh, the Gungan sub. That's so cool. I want more underwater stuff in Star Wars. Cool. Alright guys, ready to see a- you ready guys ready to see a cool base? Oh. Um, ignore the bodies, apparently. Well, it's time for us to find out what happened here. And why so many Republic soldiers and mercenaries alike um, didn't make it back alive to report what happened here. In terms of a uh, strategic advantage, it probably makes more sense that I would have my Jedi with me as we seem to be the most powerful of the bunch, but Candorus and HK can probably handle themselves. I'm confident in them. Ow! How did you get in? Did they send another submersible? Quick, we have to get out of here. We have to get away. Uh, what happened? No! No, we have no time. We have to leave now. I managed to close the door after they killed everyone else, but I don't know how long it will hold. Um, I'm not going anywhere. We have to. We have to leave. The cell cast, they went crazy. They started killing anything that moved. Someone must have triggered the defense systems too, because all the droids activated as well. I was one of the mercs the Republic sent down here to find out what happened. We came down and secured the first couple of rooms. There were bodies everywhere, and the cell calf came out, screaming and croaking their fishy little war cries. The cell calf are down here doing this. The cell calf? They swarmed out and over us. There was no way we could stop them. So we ran. But hardly any of us made it. Uh, I locked the door behind us, but but the others had already left in the submersible. The sharks, the Feroxa out there, and worse. I heard an explosion shortly after the submersible left. They didn't make it. Just food for the sharks and the Selkath. Like us. Damn. Let's get you back to the surface is actually a interesting... It's actually a choice. Let's get you back to the surface. Might be a good idea to do that. And then if there's droids down here, we did give Jolie that wonderful droid destruction ability, didn't we? Let's get you back to the surface. Back to the surface, yes. No! There's something out there. It got the other submersible already. Suggestion. Perhaps we could dismember the organic. It would make it easier for transport to the surface. Hey, you, 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 you can't just rip me to pieces. I'll die. Amendment. I did forget that. Stupid, frail, non-compartmentalized organic meat bags. We can't leave until you do something. Blow up the entire station, maybe. That might distract whatever it is long enough for us to escape to the surface. But all the machinery and stuff is in the southern half, and that's been flooded. There might still be environmental suits around, but... but the cell calf might have laid their eggs in them. <laughs> okay, I have to get into the station then. All right, well, it looks like we're not going back anytime soon because this guy's like, well, no, there's something out there now, so you can't leave. Now you're, now you're stuck here. God, HK's little, like, whenever he chimes in with something, is just like, he's instantly so iconic. I need to, like, do multiple playthroughs of these games where I just literally have the same companion through the whole thing because there's so much dialogue and it's like my favorite thing about these Bioware games, especially in a Star Wars setting. Just, I just want to take HK through the whole game as early as possible and just listen to him saying his stuff. It's so good. I have to get into the station. No! I locked the door so the cell calf won't get in. If you open it, we're all done for! I have no choice. If you go in there, you're dead. You're all dead! If you want to die, then go. You won't hear me mourning for you. I'll stay here and be safe until some sort of real rescue comes. Don't get your hopes up too high. I have no intention of dying. Yeah, this is a good group to bring down. I got my battle droid and um, I got my like, yeah, my battle droid and my, and my Mandalorian. 
You have found out that all the Selkath and defensive systems in the station in the Harakit Rift have gone insane. The station is overrun with mad Selkath and malfunctioning machinery. Somewhere in this base may be a clue to the star map. Alright, it might be a good idea to give HK iron blasters for droids, but we'll see how we go for now. Where did you go? How did you get back here without being eaten? Oh. I haven't even done anything yet, but apparently I can say we went back to the surface. Let's just say come with us back to the surface. No! Whatever You can't make me! Okay, it will be fine. No, no, no! It will eat us all up if we go out there! When the Republic sends a real team down, they'll save me. If you're going to go into the rest of the station, don't expect me to help you. Okay, so he's just nuts. Who's truly insane here? That's weird. Oh, this is so cool. Being able to view the outside as well. That's neat. Okay. See him. We got a lot of stuff in here. I keep forgetting to check out new items. I hear droids. No. I don't hear droids, that's HK. <laughs> I do, whoa. There you go, I hear droids, it's just HK though. Ah, uh, security panel. Ready! You've got computer usage skill, so let's have a look. Control storage room. Oh, well, I mean, they're not wrong. Those Selkath look mighty unhinged. That's interesting. Vent gas into the room. Do it. Imagine if all the Silkath were actually just fine. <laughs> I will actually take it at face value and I trust that the Silkath are actually insane. They don't look very good. They're not looking very normal. I mean, they look normal when they walk, but not when they're standing still. Uh, this one costs three. I'm not going to do it everywhere. East Hallway B. Alright, we've got droids. That's way too expensive. South Hallway. Right. Security room. Oh no. Oh, that I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to do that. No shield on that droid, please. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Alright, that one I have to do. Um, view... Environment suit containment. I see a suit. Okay. Security computer room. That's us. <laughs> Overload the compower. Never again. Uh, okay. We've deactivated... Yeah, some heavy yes. shields, which is good. Yeah, what do you want? I accidentally spoke to you. We will speak more once we are on our ship. Your choice. We'll speak more when we're on our ship, buddy. Let's go deal with some enemies, shall we? Oh God. All right, here's our patrol droids. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into, shall we? Okay, they're not hugely tough, the droids, which is good, but that, that other, that droid with the shield that we deactivated will probably be a different story. Nice. This is good. This is fine. Just checking to see if this droid remains. Yep. Okay, so they're called insane cell cash. Horror, please. Let's go. Go get horrified, son. Oh! <laughs> 
What drove them to be insane is my question, you know? What drove them to insanity? You're dead. Ooh. A Jedi Master Robe and a Sigil Crystal. Okay. And I'm wondering if I'm going to find any hints of what happened here on dead bodies, so we'll see. Alright, that's everywhere that we've explored. Okay, let's take a look, shall we? Oh shit, these droids are shielded. Uh, I'm gonna go for using iron grenade. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh the droids are weak. Candorous, oh, you fucking legend. Candorous just said, do not run from battle. <laughs> oh Candorous is Candorous has taught me a lesson today. Do not flee in battle. But run and face your enemy head on because they may actually be weak as piss. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. God, the atmosphere of being in this underwater base is certainly felt. Uh, shield? What? Surely this is the one that we deactivated, right? Or not? Oh no. Oh no. This is not good. Oh no, the shield is deactivated, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, this is not good. Okay, hold on. I need to activate... I only have a... Activate a, a shield. You activate an environment shield. You activate an energy shield, but that's flame damage, not energy, so yeah. I don't know. Here it is. We'll see. It's, it's, some, it's something. Oh no, that iron grenade is going to do damage to HK too. Yep, it did. Careful. Alright, we can, we can do this. We don't have to panic too hard. HK should use a repair kit on himself. Ready. Um, oh, duh, hang on. HK, instead of wielding a flame, th a gravity generator, do a stun ray. Do a stun ray. You literally have the ability to stun droids. Did it work? It didn't work. We're gonna win. We will win. Okay, we won. That was actually a little tense. What? What? Sure. Sure. Kinda was I kinda messed that up a bit. But it's okay. Tried my best. Pretty sure that was definitely the droid with the sh with the disabled shield. Because it didn't last too long. Aha, and you were blocking the environment suit. No problem. Got it. Oh, nice. <laughs> Chris Trico actually got a successful check on security. Whimpering. Ooh, a whimpering locker. Hang on, is there someone in there? Energy cell and an energy shield. Whimpering locker. Is somebody out there? Fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> Come and eat me too. <laughs> you can't get me, little fishy. Nothing here. I'm safe behind my walls. Uh, I'm Chris Draco, and I've been sent by the Republic to investigate what's happened here. Investigate? You're just like the others. Father for the Selkath. Walking fish snacks. Chomp, chomp, chomp. If you can run, you might be fast food. When the Selkath went insane and started killing everybody, I locked myself in here. I'm safe in here. Nothing can hurt me in here. No fishy food for me. Okay. You want to come out of that room, 
You feel safe with us. No, 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 no. That's what the others said. Mercenaries like you, but they're dead. The Snellcap ate them. Lunchy munchy. Only the ones left in the south part of the base might still be alive, but where the cult are is. Few fishies there, but many, many, many fishies in between the water. You want to come out of that room? You feel safe with us? No, only okay. the ones left. It won't work. Uh, what made the Selkath insane? Don't know. Go ask them. <laughs> when the demon screamed, it shook every mind in the station. We fell to the ground but survived. Fishy fishies, though, they just got hungry. Ah, I, when the demon screamed, it shook every mind in the station. Come out, we'll protect you from the Selkath. No, only the one. No. Okay. If you don't come out, I'll just leave you in there. Bye bye. Go look for fishy people. They'll chomp and bite and chomp and bite. Food for fishy. That's you. <laughs> okay. Items received. So I have the environment suit now. Oh, it's not a wearable thing. Okay, let's have a look. Enviro suit. This is a variant of a standard model Enviro suit used to protect its occupant from hostile environmental conditions. In this case, it has been specifically modified to withstand tremendous undersea pressures. All right, so I I have an Enviro suit. Oh god, and we've got more Selkath. Oh, they're attacking each other. They're fighting each other. We'll eventually get that guy. <laughs> we'll eventually get that guy out of the. Uh... Oh god! Damn it. Eventually get that guy out of the um... the locker. Scientist memo. In response to those Firax and sharks outside, I managed to whip up a little something in one of the workrooms. This is a sonic emitter, which should scare them off. The sound seems to work a lot better underwater than through the air, and if you fix it on the outside of an Enviro suit, just push the button every time they get near and you have no problems. So I was just wondering, when am I going to get that raise? Cal Jordan. Sonic emitter. Uses unlimited. This device emits a powerful sonic pulse useful for scaring off or stunning various wildlife. It normally has an extremely limited range, but in an underwater environment, the single signal would travel quite a distance, as proven quite lethal to several species of Firax and sharks. So... Um, I can use that... in... with an environment suit. I guess we're going to be walking on the... I guess we're going to be walking outside in an enviro suit soon, right? That seems to be the case. Attack this thing. Thank you. Yay. Chris has a level up. Alright, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Um, I kind of want to level up my intelligence. I'm going to put a point in intelligence. Point into persuasion. Powers. Ah, yes. The ability to do insanity. I'll take it. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Selkath. Insanity. Oh god. What am I being shot at with right now? I'll show you. Nice. I guess this is our way out. Yep, the pressure door. Okay, so that's our way out. Okay, let's quickly check this way on the map, because we haven't done down here yet. So this is the south hallway. There's another airlock. Okay, let's have a look. 
No props. Didn't work. Skill too low. Now a trap. Oh, you don't do anything. Huh? Oh, can we just bash the door down? Yes? We can just bash the door down. Oh. Wonderful. Just bash the door down. Why don't I do that more often? Nice. Let's just do that more often. <laughs> Hyper battle stimulant. Nice. No survivors in here that we haven't forced out of... <laughs> Forced out of hiding. Okay. So there's another airlock down here, as well as another droid. And a trap that I just ran into. You're dead. Easy enough. Wonderful. Easy enough to deal with. Okay, so this is another way out. With another Silkath. Perfect. Okay. Oh, oh, God. Went the long way around to do that, didn't I? Look at those huge, huge sharks outside. I'm pretty sure that this gun, whatever it is, has the ability to poison. Get insanity. Nice. <laughs> These critical strikes are actually hitting now. There you go. Maybe I should be using yeah, that what much you more. Want? Your choice. Energy projector. Foot locker. Okay. Interesting what this insane dude is referring to about the, the demon scream. Oh, we're bashing this door down as well, apparently. Bashing the door down. It's not doing much to it, to be honest. You guys want to help? You guys want to help? What? It's not taking any damage. I'm almost convinced that it's not gonna actually work. This door's health ain't going down. We've already been over the other side anyway. We'll just leave it alone. Uh, I guess we'll go through the airlock and we'll get out of here. I don't know if there's a particular reason to choose one or the other. They are just both airlocks. So, let's just... I'm, I'm going out. I'm going out the airlock. In my enviro suit. Activating airlock control. Engaging airlock seals. Success! Hostile environment conditions. Environmental suit advised. You only have one available if you proceed through the airlock. All party members will have to stay behind until you return. Um, are there multiple environment suits? I don't think so, right? I'm pretty sure the point is that there's only one. Alright, let's leave our party members. HK can go underwater. He's a waterproof waterproof droid, right? <laughs> we'll just make him a waterproof droid. He'll be he'll be fine. Alright, let's have a look. Oh, <laughs> It's a it's a literal oh no, this is gonna be awful. With the sonic emitter, okay. Oh god, okay. They made an Enviro suit segment where there's no combat, but you just have to do sonic emitters. That's so funny. Oh 
Whoa, hello, survivor. I'm gonna kill you and take your suit so I can give it to one of my party members. <laughs> Dude, why Who's are you there? just ha hanging out? You're not Cellcast, I can see that much. Are you another rescue crew? I'm Chris Draco, the Republic sent us down to investigate. I'm a merc the Republic hired a couple days ago to investigate. But all we found was a bunch of insane Cellcast killing everything that moves. All my companions are dead. The Cellcast swarmed over us. There were dozens of them. And they, they looked wrong somehow. Like something had changed inside them. Insane or something. Oh, I'd have gone back to the surface long ago if this complex hadn't been overrun by all those crazy cell calves. There's no way for me to get to the submarine docking bay. What are you doing in the underwater section of the facility? I discovered a way to get to the bay and seal off the rest of the base. I just have to find the Colto Harvester they built on the edge of the Hrackert Rift. It's got an emergency override to open the doors to the submarine docking bay. And I could get in from the outside. I figured my only chance was to slap on an environment suit, head out onto the ocean floor, and check that harvester out for myself. Besides, it's gotta be safer out on the ocean floor than back in there with all those crazed cell calf mutants running around looking for dinner. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll come with you. I'm not spending another minute in this facility. Not with those psychotic fish people all over the place. I'm heading out to the ocean floor right now. It leads to another complex of buildings. Going through them is the only way to reach the Colto Harvester. We should probably stick together, but I won't wait around in here with the cell calf. You can catch up with me if you want, down the hall and through the doors on the right. I'll be waiting on the ocean floor where it's safe. Off he goes. Do 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 do. Look at us in our little. Look at us in our little slow suits. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I think like this is the other airlock up around this way. So there's a Merc survivor here, wild. I wonder if he'll continue to survive. Uh, this traversal is painfully slow, so I'm kind of really hoping that there isn't like secrets to miss in this place or items, but this is, yeah, this is rough, this one. I want to know what was going through the developers' brains where they went and, like, they finished this level and they looked on it and they went, oh, underwater levels. Gamers love underwater levels. You know what else they love about underwater levels? Slow movement. Mm. Oh, so good. Just slow traversal. They weren't like, oh, maybe, like, the environment suit has, like, a little propulsion system, you know, that, like, allows you to, like run or like kind of jet forward a bit they're like mm. no I think you need to just like kind of do this light little jump motion you just go like tappity tap on the on the ocean floor don't you, don't you think perfect there he is on the ocean floor where we use our sonic emitters watch him die watch him get eaten by a shark immediately come on hurry up don't just stand there we have to keep moving the water is filled with <laughs> To the surprise of no one, um, he was eaten. <laughs> that man needed a sonic emitter. Too bad, son. Alright, this looks like a giant empty space of nothing. Am I right? It feels like it's right. It feels like a waste of time going down that way. I love that he was screaming before he'd even turn around. He was just, he was already screaming because he knew it was over. It is. Uh, yeah, Sonic Emitter. Okay. I have to get a bit closer, I guess. Yeah, I'm really just gonna... Like, this will be my one and only complaint that I'll list about this, and then we'll move on, because there's no point to prattle on about it. Uh, this movement speed is dog shit. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. Like, especially from just, like... I don't know, man. Like, this, this is pretty bad. And that, that's all I'll say on that. They, this should be faster. But let's let's use some Sonic on some sharks. 
Underwater levels, developers love them. Gamers kind of hate them most of the time. I don't get the obsession with underwater levels. It's really cool in theory and most of the time really bad execution. <laughs> My number one hit single will be releasing on Spotify tomorrow. You're welcome. It's called I Hate this level. <laughs> Alright, there's a airlock over here, so it's probably a good thing to go and check over here. Under the sea. Ah! Am I, am I getting eaten right now? Oh my fucking god. Holy shit. They just fucking just like peek it on the camera. Fuck me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Quick, the pressure door, let me in. Let me the fuck out of underwater. Oh, thank God. I'm assuming that's my suit. So you just take it off and you plop it there. More insane cell cap. And now I'm on my own, so this is uh, this is like, ins this is just like much more dangerous now. Good thing I've got insanity. Oh, good thing I'm also now poisoned. Insanity. Now let me heal myself. And healing. Why did it just cancel all of the? Why did it cancel my cute actions? Why are you canceling my cute actions? Do that. Get kills. Nice. Nice. Um, press Dracor's critical hits are actually like hitting now, so I can I, f I can I feel much better about actually using them. Nice. This is Crest Draco's time to shine. No more will he be the man killed in every encounter. Oh god, he will just be the man constantly blown up by random explosions instead. Ooh. Oh shit. No, no, you can't come in here. You'll let the Faraxa and the Selkath in. No, stay out, stay out. I won't let you open the door for those monsters to get in. I'll stop you. I'll suck all the pressure out of the chamber. That'll stop you. Kill them, kill them now. Bro, what the fuck? 60 seconds to complete depressurization. Oh my fucking God. Use the computer panel, please. What the fuck? Accessing airlock control. Um, deactivate. God, imagine if I didn't if I didn't have computer spikes, would I be fucked right now? No, no. The Faraxa will get us. No, the Selkath are coming. No. No, no! Ah! Bruh, I'm a friend. I'll protect you. You're both safe now. I, I'm sorry for what I did. I don't know what came over me. I, I, I just panicked when I heard someone outside the door. <sighs> Please forgive me. I'm just so scared. We're both just scared. When the Selkath went crazy, I thought everyone else except me and Sammy went mad. We had a few people outside the station when it happened. The frags and sharks just tore them apart. It was, it was like they were frenzied. The next thing we knew... Our Selkath researchers started screaming and, 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 and clawing at everything around them. My team? My team was torn apart and eaten before my eyes. Sammy and me? I... I thought we were the only ones left. We heard the Selkath outside the doors every once in a while and... strange noises echoing through the base. We thought everyone was dead. Dead or insane. I must have been hysterical. I, I don't know what I can say. I truly apologize for the horrible mistake I was making. I'm Kono Nolan, and this is Sammy. Oh. We were scientists working here on the Harakard Rift project. That's... okay. So, Kono Nolan got name-dropped last episode. God damn. You tried to kill me! <laughs> we know what the Republic was doing here. Why did the Cell Cath all go crazy? We don't know. Not for sure. The work teams were outside in the rift, near the vent. Then there was this 
rumbling and my head felt like it was splitting open. This, this monster rose up from the rift. It was a Firaxa shark, I think. Bigger than anything I'd ever seen before. Bigger than our submersibles. It was like it was screaming inside my head. Then all the Selkaths started screaming too. And they turned on us. Turned on you? It was like they couldn't control themselves. Like the sound that the monster was making in our heads drove them insane. Well, maybe it was protecting the ruins by the rift. It could have been. It might have a lair in the Harakard Rift near the Koltol vent. Hmm. That might explain a few things, too. Like what? Like why it reacted so violently when our construction efforts got closer to the vent. And also, why it's so large. It must be feeding off the Koltol. Would have to be ancient indeed for it to reach that size. But with Kolto as a food source. And all those other Firaxan sharks? Those might be its offspring. Which would be why they all swarmed when it called out to them. Children coming to protect their mother. Damn. So what can I do about it? The Firaxan sharks have always been a serious problem. We had some blasters and projectile cannons to defend against them, but. They still got some of our workers from time to time. We were working on a soluble chemical compound that would drive them away. Something that smelled or tasted repulsive to them, but we never got it working right. Oh, I think not. Even flawed like it is, it should be ideal for this situation. No, it's not working right. You don't know what it'll do. What are you talking about? The repellent we made was supposed to drive Firax and sharks away, but we never got very far in its development. The one we tested instead was violently toxic to them, rupturing their outer skin in seconds and preventing them from drawing oxygen from the water by clogging their intakes. Which is exactly what we need in this situation. Something to kill that monster shark that destroyed our station. But we don't know how else the chemical reacts. We only tried it in a controlled environment. In the open ocean, who knows what it could do? It could even affect the Kolto. We know exactly what it'll do. It'll kill the shark. That's what we designed it to do. How would I poison the shark? You can take this canister of toxin. We were working on it just before the giant shark drove all the Selkath insane. All you need to do is insert it into the main Kolto harvester and have it vented. Get away as soon as you can. We don't know how much worse it'll affect the giant Firaxan shark. Okay, I'll vent the toxin into the rift to kill the giant shark, but what other choice do I have though? Well, the monster seems to have been driven out by the machinery we installed at the edge of the rift. We've seen it out there on the cameras, bashing itself against the machines. I think if you could destroy the machinery we installed, the shark would calm down and retreat back into its lair inside the rift. Okay, how would I do that? You can reprogram the harvesting machines to overpressure their self-oxidizing fuel so that the fuel tank canisters will rupture and the entire machine will destroy itself. The hydroleum gas we use is a gas at 1 to 3 million sangin, a liquid at about 4 million sangin and a solid above that. When it's a liquid, it's very explosive. If you inject enough of the hydroleum gas into the tank, the pressure will be so great that it'll turn to liquid form and start a chain reaction inside the machine. But... But we'll lose everything we've built here. All those years of work. It's better than whatever your chemical will do to the water. <laughs> I'll do what I want and kill both of you as well. God. Doing a full dark side playthrough just seems like the most unhinged experience ever. Uh, I will try to destroy the harvesting machine. Good. Destroying the machinery will be better in the long run. We can't risk damaging the environment or the Kolto. You'll have to break into the computer on the harvesting machine and fiddle with the fuel injectors to get the tank pressure up to the point where the hydroleum will liquidize. Once the machinery is gone, the shark should leave. That won't work and you know it. We have to vent the toxin from the harvesting machine. Once the shark is dead, we can get back to mining the Kolto. You know what you have to do. I just hope you make the right choice. I know what I have to do. I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Um, oh god. Well, my only problem with this is, uh, if I have to use another computer, am I going to be stuck in a situation where I literally do not have the capacity to, like... I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> am I not gonna have computer spikes to be able to deal with my problems? That's my, that's my worries. But I mean, at the end of the day, if I don't have that, then I guess that's what the whole poisoning the shark business is for.
Republic Soldier Corpse. A breath mask. Um, I did see an environment suit in the background behind um, the characters that we just met as well. It makes me wonder if... Uh, I think I've been poisoned. Uh, I think I've been poisoned. <laughs> um, makes me wonder if we can go all the way back to get our to get our friends back. Sea floor to the sea floor. Oh, there's just a bunch of environment suits. Why can't I pick them up and take them with me so I can have my crew? Yeah, because we're stuck down here for the moment. Which does remind me. New save slot <laughs> while we're stuck down here for the moment. The entire vibe of Manan has changed from like nice tranquil city on water to fucking horrifying destination. Like this is just It is horrific. Everyone's gone insane. I almost got drowned or suffocated by this fucking guy. I I'm sorry for what I did. I don't know what came over me. I, I, I just panicked when I heard someone outside the door. <sighs> Please forgive me. I'm just so scared. We're both I'll forgive scared. you when you get that sword out of my face. <laughs> crazy. I thought everyone else except me and Sammy went mad. The frags and sharks just tore them apart. The next thing we knew, Sammy and me. We thought everyone... I must have been hysterical. I'm Kono Nolan. And Guys, what the fuck are you doing? Introducing yourselves again. I'm just talking to you for a second time. Oh god. Look, I'm sorry. I have just been under a lot of strain recently. You know, the whole thing about having my entire research team devoured before my eyes. Kono, Kono, calm down. Don't talk to him like that. We've gone through a lot and we said we were sorry for the mistake we made. Just, I'm sorry for my actions, but. I'm on a mission for the Jedi Council to find pieces of a star map. A star map? I don't know anything about a star map down here. But there were some ruins that were excavated when we were digging the foundations for the last section of the Kulto harvesting machine. But we can't go anywhere near those now. Maybe... Maybe that's why it all happened in the first place. Something happened in the ruins? We don't know. Not for sure. The work teams were outside in the rift, near the vent. This... this monster... It was a Firaxis shark... It was like it was screaming and... Then... all the... Okay... It was like... Well, maybe it was... It could have been... Like... why it... and also... And all those other... Which would be why they all... That would be suicide! Out there. The Firaxan sharks are- We were working on- Oh, I think not. No, it's not work- The repellent we made- The one we tested- Which is exactly what- But we don't know how- We know exactly- <laughs> Skip, 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 You don't need skip, to do it. All skip, you need to do- skip, Get away skip, as soon- Skip, Well, the monsters see- I think if you could- You can repro- The hydroleum gas- If you inject enough of the- But- <laughs> It's better than whatever- you Good. Destroy. You'll have to break into the c once the machinery. That won't work, and you. You know what you have to do. I just hope you make the right choice. Okay, I was hoping. Oh, items received. Hold on. Have I? Oh, I've actually been given. Oh, I've been given a second one. <laughs> I've been given. I've got two now. You get given another one when you uh, talk to them again, because it resets their whole dialogue apparently. Okay, and then this is also an exit. So there is three. Hang on, airlock, but to the sea floor. Where, where does this go? Warning: hostile environment conditions. Environmental suit advised. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're not, they 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 were not inside this room, so they won't be affected, will they? I don't think so. They should be fine. I'll quickly make. I'll quickly save again, just to make sure. Where are we? Where are we going when we go this way? Releasing airlock seals. Where are we? Where's this? Oh, hello. Get soniced, boy. Oh shit. 
Map note to Colto control. Okay, so ah, oh, this is the Harakat Rift. Okay, so the sea floor on the other rooms take us back, but this is the actual rift itself. And this goes into another room. Ah, 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 ah. Get Sonic, bitch. Where does this go? Where does this go? Head into the pressure door. Let's see where we are. Oh, what the fuck? Oh! Oh! I'm over this side. Hey guys, what's up? You guys are back with me. Cool. Okay, so that's like a shortcut. Okay. Wonderful. Well, guys, I'm going back out there, so I'll see you guys later. Leave party members begin airlock sequence. Nice! Okay, so that's a way to go back around. Good to know. And now I'll go down this way. So, in the rift. Where I just have a long and tedious walk ahead of me. What is that? What's that in the distance? It's so close. Yet so far. As we just slowly walk over here to go to the little platform. Colto control panel. Ah, oh, so this is what I can do to like overload it and shut it down? Oh god, that looks like a gi that looks like the giant shark over there. I can see it in the distance. Harvester control. Access fuel tank pressure control or feed toxin into vents. Alright, fuel tank pressure control. Operator warning. Hydroleum unstable at 4 million sangin. Pressure would rupture container pod. Continue. Fuel injector pod at 0 of 3 million. Container pod at 0 of 5 million. Command query. Uh, fill injector pod. Fuel injector pod at 3 of 3 million. Container pod at 0 of 5. Fill the container pod. 3 of 5, 5 of 5. Display pressure status. 3 of 3, 5 of 5. What does dumping mean? It just dumps the whole thing. Wait, I'm so confused. Oh, transfer from injector to container. Now it's at 3 of 5 in the container pod now if we fill the injector pod 3 of 3, 3 of 5 okay I see and then transfer from injector to container uh, transfer from container to injector so isn't it supposed to be like f one of them supposed to be 4 million and the other one can be like 1 to 3 so the container pod needs to get to 4 million. Alright, so I'm, I'm seeing what's happening here. So what we need to do is... Just trying to... I'm trying to do maths. I'm trying to make maths happen. <laughs> um, fill the injector pod, which goes to 3. Transfer it to container. Then you need to fill the injector pod and transfer that. So now we have one of three million, but now I need to like swap it around almost. Okay, three of three. That's not what I want at all. I need. Okay. So now I have one. Oh, now I know what to do. And then you dump the container pod. And then you put transfer from injector container. Now that has one. And now you fill the injector pod to three. 
transfer it from injector to container. Error, error, harvester malfunction. Continue. Emergency shutdown initiated. Failure. Warning. Container pod unstable. Evacuate immediately. There we go. There we go. We did it. We destroyed the machinery. Awesome. Uh, journal entry added. Okay. Mission for the Republic. You overloaded the fuel tanks for the culture harvesting machinery and caused it to explode. With the machine gone, the giant Frax and Shark lost interest and returned to wherever it had layered. You found one of the star maps in the ruins it had been guarding. Spoilers. Alright, I guess I'm running down this way. Isn't that the giant shark right there? Isn't that the giant shark right there? What the fuck are you talking about retreating to its lair? It's right above us. What the fuck is that? That's it. Oh, now that the culture harvesting machine has been destroyed, the Great Firaxon shows no sign of hostility and allows you to pass. Why, thank you, oh blessed, oh blessed shark. Oh blessed stripy shark. And there it is. There's our star map. As we slowly run over there, so we can activate it. <laughs> and then slowly run back. We'll check in with our with that crew and let uh, let Kono and Sammy know that we've done it. The star map is ours. We have accomplished our goal on Manan. I actually think for the most part then, I think we're, we're pretty much... I think we're pretty much done on Manan then, in terms of tasks. What we've got to do, we've done a, done a lot. There you go. Journal entry received. You've discovered another ancient star map beneath the oceans of Manan, as before, but the map is incomplete. But each map you find fills in more pieces of the puzzle. Hopefully you find all the star maps that will give you the location of the Star Forge. Um... Yeah, we're, we're close. We're close. We've just got to go to Korriban now. The Sith. The Sith planet of Korriban. Where we'll rescue... Um, potentially rescue or deal with Karth's son. Uh, Dustil. And I'm going to slowly walk back now, awkwardly. So we can talk to that gang, that scientific duo, and see if I can get them to escape. And then we'll also see if we can get that other mercenary out of here alive as well. We saw what you did out there on the cameras. Destroying the machinery was the right thing to do for everyone. That creature, the giant Frax and Shark, the guardian of the Colto or whatever it was, seems to have calmed down a lot. It may even be safe to go outside now, but we'll stay here and wait for the Republic rescue crews. Thank okay. you for not making a huge mistake. Okay, they're just gonna wait. I saw what happened on the camera, and I can't believe what you did. How could you willfully destroy the Colto harvesting machinery? That'll set us back years! I'll have you know that when we get back to the surface, I'll have the Republic do a full inquiry into your actions. Now go back to the surface and get the Republic to send a real rescue team down for us. That makes zero sense. An inquiry into what? The fact that I saved your asses and that this whole place was essentially lost without me? Nothing would have happened because you cowards were yelling and going crazy in here. Oh, we need to go and rescue that guy. We need to go and rescue that guy who's in the locker room. <laughs> we can tell him that everything's okay. Do you reckon he'll believe us? That's a, that'll be a curious one. I wonder if he'll even believe us that we've told him that everything is now chill. You know? Who knows? Let me out of here. I don't want to be in an environment suit anymore. <laughs> I don't want this. I'm tired of it. Alright, I got my crew back. Wonderful. Okay. Guy in the locker was in. He was in Enviro suit storage. Ugh. 
Uh, I think I've been poisoned. Yeah, the door's not going down. Okay. The voice actor for the player characters is so funny. Alright, we're gonna we'll check in with this lovely gentleman in Envirosu storage. Oh. I missed some stuff on the floor. And then we'll check in with that mercenary if he's uh, still chilling. Is somebody out there? Fish it. Um, come on. We sure we, we can convince him. Investigate. Yeah. In the South Catherine. Come on. We literally we've done it. We've already finished. No. no. Only the ones left. We did it, no, though. No. Only the ones left in the south part of the base. Bye-bye. What? Come on. Is somebody out there? Ha-ha! <laughs> That's what you think? Fishy think that, too. These walls and door are six centimeters. No, twelve centimeters. Of Durasteel. I'm invulnerable behind my walls. Nobody's getting in here. <laughs> when the South Kath went insane and started killing everybody, I locked myself in here. Bruh. I'll carve you into little fish bits. No, you can't have me in here. I'm invincible. Insert lightsaber into locker. Ah! <laughs> Do you guys think it was like... Do you guys think it was that was a mercy? Because I'm leaning towards the fact that that was way more of a mercy. I mean, both of the people in my crew right now would not disregard my actions. I mean, they, you know, they wouldn't be against what I've just done. <laughs> oh, fuck. They'd be like, you know what? It was a mercy killing. Dude was gonna starve to death in that thing. You put him out of his misery by inserting a lightsaber into the Jura Steel locker. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. We did what must be done. Do what must be done. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy. <laughs> Guys, I'm a, I'm a Jedi. I'm a paragon of light and justice and all that is good in this world. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's fun to be on the dark side a little bit, don't you think? Just a little bit of dark side. Just a tiny bit. I like to look at it like Jolie. I guess that mercenary's gone then. I look at it like Jolie, you know? There's a bit of, uh, you can have a bit of both. Let's get out of here. This semester could be used to ascend to the city. Let's go. The, that mercenary dude, I just, I disappeared. I guess he just died. <laughs> he dead. Alright, we're back up to the city. We have our star map. Manan has been... has been explored, which is great. Oh, You've returned. Robert was waiting for us. I was beginning to fear that you too might have been lost. Did you find out what had happened down there at the facility? Ah, uh, the Selkath went insane. Your construction work something up is actually... The better option. Something was down there? Living in the rift by the Colto? A gigantic Faraxan shark that drove all the Selkath insane. That's horrible. The entire operation wasted by a disaster we could never in a thousand years have foreseen. What has happened to the facility itself? Were there any survivors? A few scientists have survived. Well, that's good to know. Good to know indeed. But what has happened to the facility? Was it damaged? The harvesting, harvesting machine was destroyed. No, that is terrible. That will set our work back years. No, that is terrible. The war. While I am glad that you were able to solve our problems, the cost may have ended up being much too high. But you have done your job and helped us in our time of need. And for that, I thank you. Oh, and did you end up finding your star map? Uh, yes, I did. As you can see, by helping us, you helped yourself. Perhaps we can work together again in the future. Nice. Cool. Good old Roland. I think I actually figured out Roland's voice actor. 
I think it's the voice, well, I don't actually know the voice actor itself, but I recognize it ever so slightly in the voice of Lord Saladin from Destiny. Obviously, it's been quite a few years in between those two games. There's, uh, you know, some age there in the voice, but it feels so similar. You told Roland one about the giant Fraxen shark, the Colto, and what happened at the Harakit station. He is glad that the situation has been resolved, but most distressed that you resorted to blowing up the machinery to do it. Hopefully now, though, the Republic will repair their base and things will go back to normal. At least you managed to get the star map. Okay. Time to go back to Dantooine. So we can go and murder someone. And then we come back here to claim our... Our, uh, our earnings on murder. Oh shit. What's happening? Stop, human. We have detected a number of underwater detonations coming from the vicinity of the Harakit Rift. You have been known to have asked questions about this, and our spy monitors in the Republic Embassy recorded you leaving a submersible that descended to the Harakit Rift. You will come with us immediately to answer for your actions, or we will be forced to take you by force. Oh no. I'm getting arrested again. I'm getting arrested again but in, for, the, for the Republic stuff instead of the Sith stuff. Very well, I will come peacefully. Oh great, we're under arrest again. Fuck, maybe I should have told that dude, that Silcath, what was going on with the Mercs because then I'd have... I'd have some backup right now. But if they do that, the whole system could... Silence, this is not for outsiders to hear. Well, human, you find yourself in a most difficult situation. The Harakit Rift is the most precious resource on Manan, uh, Manan, sorry, and anything that threatens it or the Kolto it produces threatens our entire species. We will not tolerate threats to our neutrality, our existence, and our way of life. As much as we may admire your Republic and your order in particular, I believe you will have a hard time explaining your role in this incident adequately. We have determined that you are responsible for the detonations that occurred near the Harakit Rift. We demand to know what occurred down there. If the Republic has broken its neutrality treaty with us, the repercussions shall be very grave indeed. What have you done to the Rift? Now, all I want to say about this is, shouldn't the Sith still be getting reprimanded for kidnapping the, the Selkath stuff? Because we don't know if anything's actually happened about that. So, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Nothing happened down at the Rift. I'm pretty sure that's going to fail the Selkath. Or oh, not so easily... Not so easily dealt with. The explosions were at the research station both our governments set up there. Research station? What are you talking about? Don't try to lie to us, human. We know of this. What? It will be discussed later. This cannot be kept silent. The council will... The council will hear nothing of this, and you will keep your silence or be ejected from the court. But we cannot... Silence! Oh, wow. Tensions! What has happened at the research station? What caused the explosions? Ah, so he actually knows about it. The machinery had woken up a giant Fraxen shark. A giant Fraxen? Could it be? Impossible. It is only a legend. But he said he killed it, didn't he? You killed this shark, human? I didn't kill the shark. I destroyed the machinery to save it. The progenitor. It must have been. Be quiet. That is merely a myth and not fit for outsiders to hear. But if it was the life bringer, the ancestor of our species, think of what this could mean. If it always laired there, then perhaps the Colto. Enough, off-worlders are not to hear of such things. But he said he saved it. He destroyed the harvesters to save it. Indeed, this casts your actions in a new light, human. This, I believe, will require more thought, both on your actions and on what we must do in response. The court will adjourn while we deliberate. Just getting arrested for a second time, no biggie. 
We have reviewed your actions in the situation, human, and the sentence is title screen. <laughs> we thank you for the destruction of the machinery and saving the giant Firaxin, which we believe is the source of our Koto, or at least its guardian. We will not detain you any longer, but we cannot show our gratitude overtly. Know that you have earned our respect. The trial is now over. Lovely, thank you very much. <laughs> I am now free to leave. As soon as I opened that and saw a bunch of Cellcath, I was like, oh my god, no, you're not gonna arrest me. Don't not arrest me, I'm but a poor little Jedi boy. Okay, so he... One of the Cellcath knew about that operation. Knew about that facility. However, you know what they didn't talk about? The Sith getting punished for their actions. You know what actually, another thing that I'm actually surprised about has not happened in this in this game that I th was really expecting to happen is uh, fighting a, Gam uh, a Gamorrean. The swoop racer guy. Huck to Jax who was like, I hate you. I'm gonna get you where the cameras don't show. And I was like, well, that's definitely gonna be here because the cameras deactivate. <laughs> Leaving Archer City security zone, cameras deactivated. Like when this happens, <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, camera's deactivated, so we'll get like, we'll get like attacked, but it never happened. That's what I was expecting anyway. The Ebon Hawk. Back home on the Ebon Hawk with no Gizka on board, we've cleared it out. Alright, home sweet home. It's time for us to talk to some people at this point. On uh, on the old hawk, because we've uh, we've definitely we've definitely had a good time on Manan, but it's time for us to leave now. Energy plus one six, attack plus one. This does a damage plus two and blaster deflection plus five. Oh, plus six damage versus droids and two attack. That's nice. The demine crystal is just a straight attack plus three, so I might actually equip the Luxem one instead. And then on my purple one, I have the Opilla one, which is damage plus three and massive criticals. I'll keep that. The Demind Crystal, attack plus three. Uh, I could change that to doing Blaster Deflection or the Sigil Crystal for more damage. I'll do that. Bastler's Double Bladed Lightsaber has a next door crystal. For attack plus one, critical threat range. Um, attack, block damage, attack. Might give her better blaster detection. Deflection, sorry. Damage one, attack one. I'll give you the sigil crystal. And Jolie's lightsaber has the Bondar crystal, which is a stun for six seconds. And the Rubat crystal, damage and attack plus one each. I'll give you an attack plus three. Perfect. Then that is Jahani's lightsaber, which hasn't even really even been equipped with anything. So I may as well just give her some stuff because we don't really have her in our party. Um, just seeing what else can be upgraded at this point. Perfect. Wonderful. Doing some upgrades. Um, can I get another repair out of you now? I've upgraded my repair skill plus one. Maybe. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Can we restore some of your memory? Affirmative. Request. Statement. And now rewire the last three relays. Yes! Yes, good. Well done, Master. I believe your operation was a success. Accessing new memory. Access complete. I have recovered information on my owner previous to the commercial officer, Master. Intriguing. Wow, what's so intriguing? Statement. It appears that my previous owner was a human senator on the planet Coruscant. A man of importance who obviously appreciated quality craftsmanship. <laughs> and how did he get a hold of you? Answer. I am unsure, Master. 
any knowledge of my owner prior to him is still deleted. The Senator did assume I was a protocol droid, however. I do remember that I was very pleased to be the property of a Senator. One of his assistants discovered my assassination functions later through questioning. The assistant was quite alarmed and told the Senator I should be scrapped quickly to avoid a scandal. Naturally, the Senator had me eliminate the fool. <laughs> so we're not talking about a nice Senator, I see. Observation. Senators are not nice, Master. They are either on top of the game or yesterday's news. My Master told me that frequently, you see. I was most proud to have partaken in the political system of the galaxy. During the time my owner possessed me, he gained significant rank. Given time, I believe he could have become Chancellor. I even eliminated a few key opponents that he did not ask for. Freebies, if you will. <laughs> um, you can do that? Answer. Certainly. Why not? I am an intelligent droid, you know. I see an opportunity, and I take it. And my master was most pleased with my work. Observation. I think he would have done far better had he not allowed his use of me to become personal. He set me on his wife. And why would he do that? Answer. I am unsure. The human was most agitated and angry. I believe his wife had done something that had displeased him greatly. I was to go to their summer estate and terminate his wife, along with whatever male companion I discovered there. Ah, uh, so his wife was cheating on him. Statement. I have no idea, Master. Cheating seems to be a relevant term only when one is caught in the act. Otherwise, it is viewed as intelligence. No? I journeyed to the southern continent, but it appeared my master was not far behind me. Apparently, he regretted his activation of the protocol. When I found the wife and her companion, I proceeded to launch my attack. But my master interposed his own body and was destroyed. It was rather a strange meatbag thing to do, do you not agree? Naturally, I shut myself down, my master being terminated. I was just about to say, so that's two out of two masters killed. <laughs> Observation. Only so far, master. There are still more memories not recovered, remember? <sighs> oh my god. What happened to you then? Statement. I believe the senator's wife was unsure what I was or what to do with me. It was she who sold me to the corporate officer, an acquaintance. Wow. Uh, have you recovered any other memories? Answer. As previously, I have found a few more programs which will enhance my performance. A most gratifying discovery, in fact. There is still nothing from previous memories uncovered. You will have to operate again if you desire to find them. With luck, I will discover the stimulus to unlock my core, and all this will be unnecessary. I do thank you for the attempt, however, Master. Okay. Because of your repairs, HK-47 now has a permanent bonus of plus two to his defense and plus two dex from early repairs. Cool. Uh, memories of HK-47's owner prior to the corporate executive have been recovered. The death of the owner shut uh, HK-47 down, and eventually his wife unwittingly sold the droid to the executive. How the senator acquired HK-47 is unknown. So I guess this is just a fun little rabbit hole of a repair story. You repair his memory and he's like, oh, and my previous owner did this, and my previous owner did that. Uh, just to show that he's had, you know, a lot of experience. Statement. Affirmative. Request. I um, expect this will be a, uh, a, f a failure. Statement. Now close the last panel. Supplication. Yeah. Very well. Okay. Candorous, you got any war stories for me? Yeah, what do you want? War stories. Hmm. I think I'll tell you a bit about the recent war we had with the Republic. That might be more familiar to you. The one where Jedi Revan beat my people. We started by conquering worlds outside the Republic. We did it quietly so the Republic wouldn't really know what was going on until it was too late. When we finally did hit the Republic worlds, they had no idea we were coming. We came in through three invasion corridors in adjacent sectors. Anyone who put up a fight, or wouldn't fight, was crushed. We raised whole worlds trying to provoke the Republic into fighting us. I don't particularly enjoy wiping out worlds for its own sake, but the cowardly tactics the Republic defenders used left us little choice. What do you mean? 
hiding in the homes of civilians, using families as shields, thinking we would not use appropriate force on their bases inside major cities. They underestimated our resolve, and what measures are acceptable in war. Those who cannot defend themselves should not be around those who can in battle. If annihilating a city is the kind of power it takes to overwhelm a Republic shield device, then that's what we did. Necessary force to destroy all opposition. Mandalorians are pretty brutal, dude. You could have found another way. I have no time or patience for cowards. They deserve to be hunted down and exterminated like vermin. There was no honor in wiping them out like rats. But some of your forces did redeem the Republic in our eyes. Especially later. Okay. Uh, how did they redeem themselves? Later, when Revan had joined the war. But we'll get back to that. We've wasted too much time already. Is there something else you want to know? Can I have don't some worry. stimulants, please? I think you've got enough there as it is. You don't want to overload yourself on stims. A real warrior knows there anything else. He's limiting me. <gasps> Tell me more about the Mandalorian Wars. We fought against the Republic forces for some time, over the course of many battles. At the start, they were not much of a threat to speak of. But once the Jedi Revan took charge, things began to turn against us. The Republic fleets began to use more than just basic tactics. Feints, counterattacks, mass deceptions. Revan was a genius on the field. Revan abandoned worlds of their defenders so that others would be too fortified to strike and was willing to make sacrifices in order to advance goals. And in the end, Revan proved too much for us. Hmm. If Revan had not stopped you, someone else would have. There was no one else. The entire Republic had committed its forces behind Revan. The Sith had retreated back to their empire, and there were none else strong enough to challenge us. It looked like the entire galaxy was within our grasp. I still remember that final battle in the skies above Malachor V. The two fleets filling the space around it, outshining the stars. Malachor. Malachor V. Um, I'm pretty sure the planet Malachor is in a Star Wars Rebels related story, if I'm not mistaken. Malachor is... Mm, that's ringing a bell. Maybe if, it, if it's not Star Wars Rebels, it's somewhere. Malachor rings a bell. I feel like I know that name. What happened in the battle? It was not your ships, or your men, or your vaunted fight for freedom that won this, the final battle of the war. It was by the actions of one person, the Jedi Revan, that you prevailed. His strategies and tactics defeated the best of us. Even Mandalore himself was taken aback by the ferocity of his attacks, the tenacity of his defenses, and the subtleties of his plans. He fought us to a standstill, and then began pushing back. We really didn't have a chance. It's because Revan's apparently a badass. So, this man, this is just crazy that there's just been, like, so much of, like... Like, Revan is just, like, I guess, revered and, like, so renowned within this universe of this game, but also in fan communities as such, like, a fan-favorite kind of guy. And he doesn't even exist! He got bonked on the head on the ship and fell down. And everyone seems to love this guy. Just on legend alone. <laughs> I need to I need more of this guy. Like we're we're hearing about Revan so much, and Malak is there doing Malak stuff, but he's like, I am a bad guy. I'll blow up your planet. Here's my apprentice, Darth Baldman. And, like, I would f play him in a movie, and he randomly throws shit around the bridge and goes, I'm evil, guys, and I am going to kill my own people to prove it. Meanwhile, Darth Revan. Just, you know, there's some shit going on with him. He just seems cool, man. Give us an Old Republic movie. Or a TV show. I want to have a TV show... 
Disney Plus series, Knights of the Old Republic, the HK-47 ownership mishaps, Candorous Auto's War Stories, Bastila and Cress's Romantic Adventure Through Space. <laughs> I don't know, man. I want to have some Old Republic content. I can see why people have been clamoring for Old Republic movies for, like, the longest time now. Because I'm like, I get it. I understand it. I understand it. Candra, back to your story. I got sidetracked. Why didn't you retreat? It was what we had wanted all along, in a way. We wanted to fight the best in a battle that would be remembered for centuries. And we did. And Revan won. I don't hold a grudge against Revan, and neither do any of my people. It was the greatest moment of my life to be in that battle. If Revan had been a Mandalorian, nothing in the galaxy would have stopped us. But wishing for the past to be different is useless. Better look to the future, as we should now. We'll talk more later, I think. Is there something else you want to know? Bruh. Revan being a Mandalorian would have been insane. Water worlds never had much of an appeal for us to conquer. They may put up a good fight on their own environment. No match for us, of course. But they don't really have anything of value, either. The thing this world is good for is a substance known as Kolto. Kolto is the single best healing substance in the galaxy. But the Mandalore are not as weak and fragile as your Republic and Sith warriors. When we enter a battle, we carry weapons powerful enough to pulverize cities. Both in our wars and in our own personal combats, there are no survivors. So Kolto does not hold the appeal it does for your peoples. Do you have anything else you want to ask? Nothing more for now. Your choice. Candorus described the end of the Mandalorian Wars to you. He seemed to admire Revan greatly. Maybe you can ask him about this later. Cool. Jolie! Got something on your mind? Uh, you never did actually say why you decided to come with me. I think this is actually, again, dialogue that we got a couple of episodes ago that I haven't caught back up again. Because I haven't spoken to him yet, which is my bad. No, I never... Yeah. Do you always be this elusive? elusive? Yeah. At any rate, I've done this dialogue before. Told you I... In a previous episode. And I already explained that I had to restart a thing. And do a thing. And now I'll talk to him. To bed! I'm up. How many... And then there's a... So I could. I'll admit. Of course not. What? In fact, but... Your future will... I wouldn't worry about it. Know me, Sunrider. Whether you'll follow the same path remains to be seen. Oh, stop being such a baby. One thing I will say is that... Or at least it would remind me of those... Okay. Um, you provided Jolie an effort to find out why he decided to come with you. In the end, he did mention his adventuring days. Perhaps you could ask him about them later once you gain more experience. I'm going to try and talk to him again, because we don't know any dialogue past that point. Got something on your mind, do you? Oh, yeah, I don't think he was going to play say anything for a while. Manan's an unusual place. Not for its water, mind you. It's the Kolto, healing juice. Only place where it occurs in the galaxy. And that's about all I got to say about that. Now, let's get going. So if Kolto's a healing juice, and that juice potentially comes from a giant shark, are we drinking shark cum? Oh, I get it. Let's... Food for thought? I mean, it... Who knows, man? <coughs> Have anything more to say about yourself, Zalbar? <coughs> nope. So I think Zalbar is very much limited to Kashyyyk and Kashyyyk alone. Outside of that, he says, You know what, mate? You don't know me, I don't know you. Life, debt, whatever. Fuck you. I got nothing more to say to you. <coughs> you know? Like, uh, that kind of that kind of makes me sad. It makes me sad. Um, obviously, you can't get these amazing, intricately detailed loyalty missions and all of this for every character, I suppose. Like, T3 literally does nothing but look cool and beep at you. You know what I mean? And give you programming spikes. Um, there's no mission for, for T3. You don't talk much, do you? Just chime in if you have advice. And then he beep boops. <laughs> um, we haven't really gotten... Uh, let's see if we got an update on Jahani. Because Jahani, last time we spoke to her, was blaming us 
for uh, she was blaming us for our uh, the destruction of her home world. Yes. What is it? Is something wrong? I was remembering Taris. What about it? It was a horrible place to have to live. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. And those rat ghouls. There was always the danger of rat ghouls coming up from the sewers, or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. But we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. Was it that bad? I had no money to spare for any amenities. Even the enclave on Dantooine seems a paradise in comparison. And of course, there was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. Uh, like who? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I am sorry. I am getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. Your parents? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic. To save the galaxy, if we can. Okay. Jahani's parents fled to Taris from the homeworld of her species. Unfortunately for them, Taris was very oppressive towards alien species. Life was not easy for them. Perhaps she will tell you more in time. Um, okay. And then... Oh, shit. I forgot to, I forgot to redo that. This is this is a quest that I that we did, but it's still in here because I you know I told you I had to pre reload a save to fix the Bastila bug, hopefully fix that bug. So I should I need, I'll go back to Kashyyyk and I'll just do that in my own time. Missions brother, we can't do that. It's bugged. Missions brother doesn't exist. We can complete that. We can go find Dustil on Coraban. We've got to go to Dantooine now and kill a guy. <laughs> Um, and then that's it. Cool. I like it. Let's go to Dantooine, because Karth and Bastila don't have anything else to say anymore, so we'll just leave them alone. Uh, because we don't want to risk anything. So let's go to Dantooine. I'm assuming we'll get another cutscene with Malak now that we've found another piece of the star map. I was expecting a run-in with Darth Bandon at some point, like, on this planet, considering it introduced him as like the thing that uh, let me show you my Sith apprentice Darth Bandon who's gonna come in and apparently be a villain for us to shove a lightsaber through you know but we'll see maybe he's just on our tail and then maybe it'll be Korriban because that's like the Sith Sith planet the final star map Oh shit. What happened? What's going on? This is exactly what I wanted. They must have been waiting for us on the hyperspace route. We're caught in their tractor beam. Do you recognize the ship? It's the Leviathan. Saul Karas' vessel. My old mentor. The Leviathan. Alright, Bioware. You love your Leviathans, don't you? We've been caught in a tractor beam. Going to Dantooine. <laughs> Shit. 
So this is the Leviathan. Oh no. Admiral Kareth taught me everything I know about being a soldier. He was a legend in the Republic fleet and a hero to me until he betrayed us. When the Sith attacked my homeworld, the Leviathan, which is Saul Kareth's flagship, Leviathan. was at the head of the fleet. My family was destroyed that day and my wife died in the Sith bombardment. Dude, so we're getting pulled apart the Leviathan. I just was I just wanted to go to Dantween. <laughs> okay. Damn. Okay. Well, I was like, ah, oh, not getting much out of Darth Bandon. And the game certainly didn't want to give us much out of Darth Bandon either. They just said, ah, oh, just get him on the main ship with Malak and and, um, <laughs> and Karath in, instead. Okay. Um, don't do anything you'll regret. Path. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I mean, I won't throw our lives away in some mad quest for vengeance, but if I get a chance to kill Saul during our escape, nobody better get in my way. Talk of an escape is somewhat premature, don't you think? We don't even have a plan to get out of this mess yet. And I'll admit, it won't be easy. Saul's no fool, and he won't underestimate us either. You can count on plenty of guards watching every move we make. Maybe Admiral Carruth doesn't know how many of us there are on board. We all have special talents. Talents we could exploit so that one of us could stage a rescue. We just have to figure out who has the best chance to avoid capture so they can come and rescue us later. It's a long shot, but it's our only hope. Oh. Don't worry, I can get away from Admiral Karath's guards. Is there some way you could use your battle meditation here? Karth knows Sol the best. He can get us out of this. Admiral Karth will be watching the three of us very closely. One of the others is going to have to save us. So it's a split between the three of us. Well, if we're gonna pick someone to save our skins, we better do it quick. In another minute, we're gonna have Sith troops marching up our loading ramp. Oh, I can also I can also just change to to other people. Mission can do it. No prison can hold her. T3M4 is a pretty resourceful little guy. He could pull this off. Jolie could use the force to affect their minds. Candorus, is there some way we could exploit your healing ability? Jahani, you can use your force powers and camouflage abilities to avoid capture. A droid would have the best chance. HK47 could come and rescue us. This sounds like a job for a Wookiee. Uh, if we're actually looking for... like someone to rescue us... We would would you want to pick the best security stealth character, right? So that would be mission. Maybe I can goad the guards into making a mistake. If I get them mad enough, they might put me in a separate cell to punish me. With them focusing so much on you three, I might be able to sneak out of my cell and come rescue the rest of you. No, it's too dangerous. It's a risk we have to take, Big Z. I can slice my way free of any security cell. Don't worry, I can pull this off. You know what I wish we could pull off a of U-Mission? Those dumb goggles I put on your face. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you make the Sith mad, they might just decide to kill you. I don't like this plan. This could work, and it's not like we have much choice. Uh, that is true, though. The decision is yours. You're in charge. But I know I can do this if you give me a chance. Okay. Okay, so we can go through and do a review. Ah, we can do a review of each character and weigh up the options. T3? Beep boop boop. Droid's right. If we disable him, the Sith will probably wipe his memory chips and take him to the junk pile. But if we can rig a backup memory chip with a timer, when it kicks in, the little fellow will be reactivated and he can come find us. I'm afraid the Sith will melt him down before his backup chip kicks in. Well, that's a risk we might have to take. Unless you can come up with a better plan to get us out of this. Okay. Um, maybe Jolie could use the Force to affect their minds? I don't think I could use my Force powers to convince a whole squadron of troopers to let me go free, but maybe I can use it to get them to take me to a separate cell. They'll probably only leave a single guard to watch over an old man like me. I could use the Force to convince the guard to set me free, then I could free the rest of you. Okay. I've learned a few things in my time, kid. Don't underestimate the force, for one, but it's your call. If you want to try a different plan, go ahead. Okay. 
This sounds like a job for a Wookiee. Is that wise? We need someone inconspicuous for this task, and Wookiees tend to draw a lot of attention, especially from arresting troops. Maybe you should go with someone else. Yeah, there's like not even... <laughs> There's not even a way to actually give it to him either. Like, there's ones where it's like, oh, it might be a risk. But for Zalbar, it's literally just like, no. <laughs> uh, Candorous. You could give me a shot to delay my healing mods from kicking in. A small incendiary grenade will leave burn marks that look like I was injured while making repairs to the ship. Make my wounds bad enough, and the Sith will drag me off to the morgue or the medical facility to die. When my healing mods kick in, I'll come back and save the rest of you. You're not immortal, Candorous. Your injuries could kill you before your healing has a chance to kick in. I'm the best chance we've got, and everyone knows it. But you're the boss, so I'll bow to your authority. I still think it's best, unless you've come up with another plan. Okay. Um, HK-47 could come and rescue us. Statement. My construction includes a reserve memory chip and backup power supply that automatically kicks in if I have been shut down too long. Deactivate my main circuits and wipe my memory chip. The Sith will take me to the junk heap, and I can come rescue the rest of you after I reactivate. Oh no, but then we have to wipe his memory chip. Then he, I guess, so he does a backup one. I'm scared about his memory. What if the Sith disassemble you before your reserve power supply kicks in? Answer. That is possible. My reserve power supply is a prototype yet to be tested, yet I can attempt this task, if you wish. Okay. Ah, <sighs> okay. Uh, that's our... that's our list. And then Jahani. You speak the truth. I alone of all the group might be able to remain hidden if the Sith search the ship. I could wait until the guards have completed their search, then come to rescue you. Okay, my best my best options, in my opinion, would be Mission, Jahani, and potentially Candorous. So Jahani could hide. Mission could rescue us. And Mission would is quite stealthy and good with security. I don't know, I've i just like I feel like it's the force to go with mission. It, I don't know. Mission just feels right. I think you may be underestimating my abilities. Mission feels right. Maybe I can go with them focusing. <laughs> it's a risk we have to take, Big Z. This could work, and it's not like we have much choice. Well, we do. We have an insane amount of choice, but I feel like mission is a good choice. I won't let you down. You'll see. Hold on. They're dragging us into the docking bridge. Okay. Mission is going to be responsible for breaking us out. Bastila, Karth, and the crew have been taken prisoner as you ordered, Commander. Excellent. Have you searched the ship thoroughly? Admiral Karth warned me to be on alert for any kind of treachery. We found a young Twi'lek in the back. She's got quite the mouth on her. She swore at me and spit on my uniform. She tried to bite me through my armor. And you should hear what she said about my mother. Admiral Carath needs to teach her the proper respect for the Sith. The Admiral doesn't have time to bother with some Twilight girl. Take her away to solitary confinement. I'll leave it up to you to teach her the proper respect for the Sith. There we go. Solitary confinement, baby. Karth, it has been far too long since we last spoke. I see the recent months have not been kind in your case. I barely recognized you. But I recognize you, Saul. I see your face every night, even as I promise myself I will kill you for what you did to my homeworld. Did you learn nothing in your time under me? As a soldier, you should understand that casualties were unavoidable. This was an act of war. It was a cowardly act of betrayal. Your fleet bombed a civilian target into oblivion without warning or provocation, and the blood of those innocent people is on your hands. In war, even the innocent must die. The Sith would not accept me until I proved I had truly turned my back on the Republic by bombing the planet. My wife died in that attack, Saul. And for that, I swear I'll kill you. You used to be a man of action, not of empty words. Cling to your lust for revenge if you must, but spare me your tired threats. I've heard them all before. You're an insignificant part of these events anyway. Lord Malak is far more interested in your Jedi companions. He has great plans for them. We will never serve Malak or the dark side. The Sith will be destroyed, Admiral Karath, 
As will you if you don't turn away from this path. Your words are brave, Bastila, but the lure of the dark side is hard to resist. Or so I've been told. I wonder if your companion is as devoted to the light as you are. <laughs> For the right offer, I could probably be convinced to join the Sith. Why would I say, you know, for, the, for the right price, I'll do anything for the Sith. You're wasting your time, Saul. I'll never betray the Jedi. You're defiant. I'm certain Malak will find your loyalty to the Jedi amusing. The Dark Lord would probably reward me if I just killed you once and for all, but he may want to question you given the trouble you've caused him and the history between you. Huh? History? What are you talking about? You mean, oh, this can't be true, can it? You really don't know what's going on here, do you? Well, I won't be the one to deprive Malik of the pleasure of telling you himself. The Dark Lord will no doubt torture you for information and for his own twisted pleasure. Eventually, you will tell him everything. The Sith can be very persuasive. However, Lord Malik is in another sector. It may be some time before he arrives, so I suppose I will have to fill in for him until then. Activate the torture fields. Activate the spicy cells. Yeah! Enough. <laughs> I don't want them to pass out before I question them. Malik will appreciate any information I can give him when he arrives. Don't waste your breath, Saul. We won't answer any of your questions. I'm sure you won't. However, we both know your friend's loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. What is this? What is this guy talking about, everybody? This is fucking weird. Um, history with Malak. Our character has history with Malak. And our loyalties have proven in the past to be somewhat flexible. Why are we such a special character in this game? Hmm. Something's happening here. What are you talking about? I am interrogating you, not the other way around. You will answer questions, not ask them. It is time to put your loyalty to the test. I doubt torturing you will gain me your true cooperation. Your will is too strong to be broken that way. However, even the strongest of heroes has trouble watching those they care about suffering. The interrogation will begin now. Each time you refuse to answer or give me a false answer, Bastila will suffer. Oh no, not my fucking... Not my girlfriend! Don't, don't fucking, don't mess with my Jedi girlfriend, bitch. I'll get you. Go ahead, torture. I don't really like her anyway. No. Don't hurt her. I beg you. Oh, man. Oh, no. This is me totally giving in to my feelings here. And then this one is trying to remember the Jedi Code. And then this one is just bad. This one, Bastila would like, but also dislike because of the not good adherence to the Jedi Code. And as, uh, as we would be called on Manan, a total simp. <laughs> Stop this simpering. Um, and then this one. Oh, man. I will not betray the Jedi Order, even the save Bastila. I mean, do I have ties to the Jedi Order, really? They're cool. They've got a, a Yoda on their, on their squad. But do they have Force, Lightning, Plague, and Insanity? Those are some pretty cool abilities. And Dominate Mind. <laughs> I gotta say, guys, the dark side is, like, pretty cool. I should join it or something. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna say don't hurt her. I'm gonna give in to my feelings. Because... That kiss was unforgettable. My pain is meaningless. Tell him nothing. I tire of these games. Now I want answers. On what planet is the Jedi Academy at which you were trained? 
<laughs> that's a great that's a great touch dude that's a great touch older on it's on older on <laughs> it's a persuade or a lie option oh it could be worth trying we have put our persuade quite high being the conversationalist that we are shall we try it Bastila, you might feel a little tingle in a second, but it's for science. And also, it's a great reversal on that episode 4 line. Right, I'm going to say Alderaan. It's on Alderaan. Alderaan is nothing but a planet of artisans and philosophers. Oops. There is no training academy there. You must think this is a game. Very well. This is the price of your resistance. <laughs> Enough. Oops. See what happens when you try to defy me. This first question was a test. Obviously, Malak knew the academy was on Dantooine, and it has since been destroyed by our fleet. Dantooine is an empty graveyard now. Nothing is there but a smoking ruin and the charred remains of your former masters. No fucking way. No way. No. That's not true. That's impossible. There's no way. Did this trigger, did this whole us getting captured in the Leviathan trigger because we were going back to Dantooine? I just wanted to go to Dantooine to kill a random dude for the Geno, and now we've totally missed that whole thing because we're imprisoned. I don't, I don't. Mm. Well, they knew it was on Dantooine. If they know it's on Dantooine, it's totally valid that they might have actually destroyed it. Which means there's no Jedi Order for me to stay loyal to, because I never met the ones on Corazon. <laughs> um, oh man, you will pay for this crime, Sol. You and all the Sith. More empty threats. We Sith prefer to let our actions speak for us. Perhaps that is why we are winning this war. Now, tell me your mission. How were the Jedi planning on using you to stop Lord Malak and our Sith Armada? I mean, I don't have, I don't really have much trouble telling the truth on this one. It's like they're already aware of the existence of a Star Forge. I mean, obviously, obviously, it's the it's the cool thing to do is to get yourself a Star Forge if you want to have power. I have a feeling that the persuade lie option is not going to be good. We're going to just fail. So I'm going to actually say we've been searching for the Star Forge. Why? Why are you telling him this? You should be grateful, Bastila. He is sparing you agony beyond comprehension. Words that betray the Jedi Order bring me more pain than any torture ever could. Tell me, how did you find out about the Star Forge? <laughs> I found Malak's diary. A diary? This is not the time for jokes. I will only ask you one more time. How did you find out about the Star Forge? For the sake of the Republic, don't tell him anything. Don't listen to her. Tell me what I want to know or watch Bastila suffer. Why do you have to bring Bastila into this, you bastard? This feels... The, the, all this discuss I'm taking my time because all of these discussions feel super weighty. Like, they feel very conclusive. And I hate it. It feels like it's very much like this is determining the path. And it's and it hurts to be like, which is the right choice to make? I will tell you nothing more. I will try and continue my resolve as a Jedi. This has never wavered at any point in time. I had hoped you would continue to cooperate, but you seem to have changed your position. Bastler is strong. No! Ah, no! I beg you, no! Mercy! Ah, no! I am surprised she did not pass out sooner. Rastler just asked for mercy, though. Punishment and Fuck. remain conscious. I see I am wasting my time here. When Malak arrives, you will learn my interrogation techniques are considered merciful among the Sith. Nice. I leave you here in your cell with a small taste of the horrors you will suffer when Lord Malak arrives. Oh! They're still zapping us. They're zapping our buttholes. God damn it. Don't try to move too quickly. 
You might not be fully recovered yet. Admiral Carath had his guards continue to torture you even after you passed out. They tortured all of us, though you got the worst of it by far. Saul wanted them to make us suffer. He's become some sort of sadistic monster. The dark side has perverted him, Karth. Once you start down the tainted path, it leads you ever further into the depths of evil. I fear he is forever lost. Wow. Hmm. We're getting some interesting we're getting some interesting dialogue here today. Some interesting dialogue here today is all I can say. No one is is without hope of redemption, Bastila. Yes. I suppose you're correct. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that hope in the face of such unbridled cruelty. But you speak the truth. I suppose I'm taking the news of Dantooine's destruction quite hard. First Taras, now the Academy. Is there no end to the killing? Maybe Admiral Carath was lying. I'd like to believe that Saul was lying to us. But even as he said the words, I knew they were true. The Academy is gone. We should have felt a disturbance in the Force when the attack came. The fact that we did not is a bad sign. I fear the dark side is growing stronger, casting shadows our vision cannot pierce. I can only hope that some of the Jedi escaped. Rook, Vendar, Saar. I cannot imagine all of them being gone. In any case, we've lost our one place of refuge in the galaxy. None of this will matter if we don't get out of this prison before Saul gets back. Uh, where is Saul now? Saul mentioned that Lord Malak was on his way. I think the Admiral left to prepare for his arrival, and to report the results of our interrogation. It is fortunate you were able to resist the Admiral's questioning. The fate of the galaxy could be changed by revealing the slightest piece of vital information. I have to confess something. There was a moment, just a moment, when part of me was hoping you would tell him what he wanted to know, just to make the horrible pain stop. Mmm. The only reason I stayed silent was to watch you suffer. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, Bastila. Watching you suffer tore me apart. It broke my heart. I know you would never do anything to intentionally cause me pain, but you did the right thing. I don't honestly know if I could have been as strong in your position. To watch you suffer like that, it might have been too much for me to bear. Did you feel that? A disturbance in the Force. The Admiral has sent his message. The Dark Lord knows we're here now. Malak is coming. Well, then we better hope Mission busts us out of here before he arrives. Yeah, how's that? Come on, girlie. Into the cell. Let's go. I haven't got all day to waste on you. I need to get back to my post. Quit crowding me. Shish. I've met Gamorreans who didn't smell as bad as you said. You think you're pretty funny, don't you? But you're only making things worse for yourself. How come every time you open your mouth to talk, the scent of rancor dung comes out? Maybe a little time in solitary confinement teach you the proper respect for the Sith. Now get into that cell. Who designed those Sith uniforms anyway? A blind Rodian with a sick sense of humor? <laughs> the Rodian at the other side of the cell just straight up being like, hey! No, oh, that's funny. That was uncalled for. You tell that one to the torturer when he comes to deal with you. What? You're, you're going to torture me? No snappy comeback this time. The thought of torture scares you, hmm? Well, it should. The Sith have ways to inflict pain you can't even imagine. It may be a few hours before your torture begins. We're busy interrogating your friends right now. Hey, I know. You could use this time to think up witty ways to beg for mercy. <laughs> Go mission quick, sprint out while he's walking. <laughs> All right. I could use the key card I lifted from your pocket to slice into the security panel and get myself out of this cell. Yes, you Piece can, Mission. I wonder when people will stop underestimating me. Oh, I'm playing as Mission. Oh shit, we are okay. I'm we're playing as Mission. Well, crap. All right. Well, hopefully we don't have to use a computer. <laughs> Hopefully it's just all unlocking doors. I have not leveled up. I have not leveled up uh, mission in a little while. We haven't even used mission in a little while. So you've got melee proficiency level one. You've got blasters. You've got the ability to do dueling. So that's something. 
Improved Caution gives a plus two to, to stealth, which is a good idea. But also I might do... Improved Dueling. Oh no, that doesn't... We're sneaking. What am I, what am I talking about? I don't even have any gear on me. I'm in my underwear. Caution. Accept. Thank you, mission. Okay. I have nothing on me. Perfect. Just what I always wanted. So. So. Uh, we are on the Leviathan. And we are now playing as mission in our cute little boots. In our cute little shoes. <laughs> As we are now going to sneak aboard the Leviathan and rescue, uh, well not sneak aboard, but sneak through the Leviathan to rescue Karth, Barcelor, and Crest Dracor. We managed to survive the questioning with only slipping out a little bit of information in relation to the Starforge. Um, I am really curious to see the consequences of our choices leading up to a moment like this, which is a confrontation with Lord Malak on the Leviathan. Uh, we haven't even been we haven't even been to Korriban yet for the st for the star map, so either we'll end up there after, or we're getting to a point in the story where it's actually like give it, that whole thing was like almost wasted or like a misdirect, and it's like nah, the bad guy has shown up and shit's about to get serious. Who cares about Korriban, you know? Or maybe we like I don't know, like it's it's really. I, I feel like we're still going to be able to go to Korriban, considering Karth's son is there. So, we'll just have to see in what circumstances we get there. You know, we'll see. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Knights of the Old Republic. We'll bring this episode to a close. It's been a blast. Um, having fun on Manan, getting unexpectedly captured. Dantooine has been destroyed, uh, which Bastila seems to have confirmed to be true. Which is also a shame, because I was like... I missed out on some cool side quest stuff. I really got excited about doing secret society bounty hunter stuff. But that is what a second playthrough is for, I suppose. If I've missed my opportunity to do that, we will see. Um, but again... The, the main story is hitting us pretty hard right now. So I guess we should focus up on that. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.